This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Station is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Friday, March 11th. This is how we do it. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man celebrating the return of Major League Baseball with all of the writers, yeah. Jerem Jordan. I'm excited. I am very excited. Because uh, I think the Mariners might make the playoffs this year. And they've extended the playoffs to 12 teams from 10. So there's no excuse now. So now it's uh, next week is going to be one of the greatest weeks of the year for sports. It already was going to be with March Madness. But now it's baseball free agency after the luck. It's going to be insane. 12 it's team be playoff great. and both leagues using a designated hitter. Yeah. No more pitchers swinging Gosh. awful I'm, things. I miss watching pitchers bats, said no one. But Madison <laughs> Bumgarner. Um, yeah, they're terrible. So it's great. I'm, there's a lot of work to be done in baseball, of course. But yeah, let's go. Go Mariners. Let's make the playoffs. 2023 World Champs. We've got a home run Friday show lined up, including the final bubbly update before the weekend for BYU men's basketball. Listen, are you on a hill with Jerry Palm of CBS Sports waving the BYU is in flag? Because he still is. If so, what's your name? Like, who are you? Dual threat analyst Blaine Fowler joins us to discuss the reasons for and against BYU to make the tournament or not as we head into Selection Sunday and why he says the BYU football offense is elite in spring ball. Excuse me? Mm Mm-hmm. Plus, one of the top ten all-around gymnasts in the entire country, Sadie Minor Van Tassel. She's actually elite. Is on the program. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. BYU baseball beats number six Oklahoma State eight six at Globe Life Field, home of the Texas Rangers, who are going to lose to the Mariners a lot of times this season. Thanks to a sixth inning pinch hit grand slam from Ryan Sapiti. How about that? Holy shnikes! This is the second highest ranked opponent the Cougars have beaten since 2013 under Mike Littlewood. Cougars have won eight of nine. This team is on fire! Yep. Yep. Game two of three tonight. 7.30 Eastern on BYU Radio. This team's bringing it, man. Yeah. Cole Gamble hit his third home run. Colin, Colin Ritter. Ritter. Solo. They went back to back. Yeah. Okay. And More. then Ryan Sapiti. More. Let's keep it rolling. BYU spring football. Elite. <laughs> Still <Stop>. rolling. <laughs> And, uh, in, thou shalt not use it in vain. You know what? Here's a recap. You decide with a look at the defensive line specifically from Dave McCann and Blaine Fowler. Two weeks in, three weeks to go for spring camp. Today our focus was on the defensive line. What'd you think? Yeah, as you and I were talking, that, that was an area of concern for me coming into spring ball. A lot of injuries there last year, a lot of young players. And if BYU is going to compete, with the schedule next year and then move into the Big 12, that's an area they have to get much better. So so we watched the D-line all practice today. I was keeping an eye on Tyler Batty. It's good to see him healthy, on the move, and he's huge. Yeah, he looks like a monster yeah. out there. He's put on probably 15 pounds of really good weight. So I I, was, I took some notes right. as we were out there, and I'm thinking, who's rotating through? So Toyota Mariner, Larson, Nelson, Batty, Summers, Hawes, Mangelson, all returning guys that we saw play last year, every one of those guys looks more fit, they're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger. So great things I expect from them. And then two new additions, Logan Fano right. and Bruce Mitchell, return missionaries, gray shirts, they look fit. I, I think Logan Fano is going to have a big impact. So we go from an, an area I was concerned about, and I'm looking out there going, wait a minute, but he's got nine guys that they can play there, and they're all looking big and strong and fast. Maybe not so much a concern anymore. Let's finish up with the quarterback. we got to watch actually a little more than usual at practice today. Jaron Hall, and he looks ready. Yeah, it, everything about what he's doing is better than a year ago in spring. Whether it's seven on seven, one on one, or in team, the ball's coming out on time. He's making great decisions with great velocity. He really looks good. It's cold outside, but we're still thinking about South Florida better in September. It. For Blaine Fowler, I'm Dave McCann. Back to you. Ah, uh, yes. Back to us. Tampa. Back to you. Much warmer than Provo, Utah on March 11th. Yes, it is. In the latest bracketology, the women's team is still a five seed in Charlie Cream's bracket. Selection show is Sunday, 8 Eastern on ESPN. The men are fifth out, according to Joe Lenardi. Jerry Palm saw the Cougars as a 12 seed, which is weird. 
Selection show is Sunday, 6 Eastern on CBS. We're not even going to say what time the NIT Selection show is. We don't, we don't care. BYU track and field off to nationals in Birmingham, Alabama this weekend at the Division I Indoor Track and Field Championships. Seven individual athletes as well as a relay squad will represent the Cougars, led by senior Courtney Wayman, who will attempt to defend her national title in the 3,000 meter and as a member of the aforementioned relay team. You can watch live coverage of the event all weekend on Watch ESPN. Softball lost 8 0 to number 23 Arizona State in game one of the Sun Devil Classic in Tempe, Arizona. A rare loss to the Pac 12 this year. Yeah. Today, the Cougars play Rutgers and the entire Grand Canyon, then Ball State and UMKC tomorrow. BYU men's volleyball back in action in the Smith Fieldhouse this weekend when they host Concordia Irvine tonight and tomorrow. The Cougars working to break the longest losing streak they've suffered since 1990. It's nine games. While Concordia comes in with two wins over Stanford last week. This is an interesting matchup. Eh, you Concordia. can watch both of them, yep. 9 Eastern, yep. on BYU TV and the app. Concordia played Wednesday night. Their travel got mix, mixed up. They actually left this morning. Someone tweeted at me that they saw them in the airport at LAX at 5 a.m. Whoa. They're going to be tired tonight. Take advantage. Let's go. And the streak. Number 19, BYU Gymnastics has its last meet tomorrow, 2 Eastern time, against Arizona. Watch it on the BYU TV. How about some football news from former BYU offensive lineman T. John Karoma, who was drafted yesterday by the Michigan Panthers oh. in the ninth round of the United States Football League supplemental draft. This will mark Karoma's first year in the USFL after pit stops in the NFL, XFL, and Spring League, because apparently there's a Spring League too. T. John, is T. John the first guy to have been on all in all four? <laughs> did he play but, in the like, AAF too? <laughs> I don't think he did. That one didn't Maybe. work out well. Yikes. I worked one game. Have you been that. paid for that? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not. Get I your paycheck there? I wasn't keeping track. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm guessing no. With that said, all rise and wow. shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Bubblicious. Let's do this. Selection Sunday approaches. BYU men's basketball, as we've mentioned a couple of times, still in and not even one of the last four in, according to Jerry Palm of CBS Sports. Yeah. You want to call him the blue goggle oh, bracketologist? Blue goggle alert. Okay. Blue goggle alert. Blue goggle alert. But every other alert. national analyst seems to have the Cougars on the outside looking in. Thanks, Stained. You're welcome. Let's take a look at our BYU basketball resume update before we get into all of the bubble talk. BYU maintains at number 54 in the net rankings. The Cougars at 51 in the Ken Palm metric. That's down one spot from yesterday. Yeah, Jerry Palm doing his thing. Joe Lenardi dropped BYU two spots from the third team out to the fifth team out after some teams on the bubble won important games yesterday. And team rankings, they've bumped BYU up to 1.4%. Not really sure how to read it. That bracket matrix has oh, yeah, BYU in 13 of 133 brackets. So too many mm. <laughs> Now, Jerem, you asked Jerry Palm. He joined the program Jerry? earlier this week. What BYU has going for them, and what would get them into the bracket and on the resume? What what, what do they have going for them in their resume? He said this. And the fact that they they had a good record compared to some of these other teams against teams in the top two quadrants and the top three quadrants, and that's you know that's really what's going to be what pushes them into the bracket because they're going to be competing with teams that don't have two wins over teams in the tournament, and you know uh, BYU's got three. Well, there you go. Yeah, quality wins. Not enough. Does the committee truly value the entire body of work? Because we have been told, the committee has said, now there's no more metric for playing well going into the tournament. It's just strictly body of work. Because consider Xavier, okay? They lost eight of the final ten games. They lost eight of ten, and then they lost in the conference tournament. Nine of 11. And Joe Lenardi still has them in. 
because body of work. Because Big East. And it's Big East, mm-hmm. sure. But, yeah. hey, I mean, so is momentum not a thing anymore? Are they truly going to value just, hey, body of work? All of this is very interesting. Jerem, Jerry Palm gave us his case. What do you think? If BYU gets in, why would BYU get into the bracket? <laughs> I don't believe BYU is getting in. I really would love for BYU to get in. That, that, that'd be great. If BYU's in, it's because they had four quad one wins and their net non-conference strength of schedule was top 100. It's 99 at the moment. That would be why. That would be why. Um, you know, be, the, the aforementioned uh, wins against team in the tournament. That's St. Mary's, net 19. That's San Francisco, net 25. On the road, Two no top less. 25 teams, fantastic, in net. San Diego State, still hanging on as a quad one uh, at 28, which is great. Yeah, uh, that's why BYU would get in, I think. Those quad ones and the net non-conference strength of schedule. That's That was Mark Pope's argument. Sure, and I was just going to bring that up. I asked Mark Pope after BYU lost in the conference tournament, okay, what's your case? Yeah. And he went immediately to, look, if the committee truly values challenging yourself in the non-conference, then they're going to like our resume because we challenged ourselves and – BYU won some games in the non-con. I know that things got really weird late in the season in the West Coast Conference. And some people say, oh, BYU still won, you know, a handful of games late. It ah, doesn't help that it was LMU, LMU and twice Pe- and Pepperdine LMU twice. LMU thrice. Right? It was, it was three of the last five. Yeah. So it didn't help BYU much. I mean, the Cougars, we pointed at that game against San Francisco as, hey, you beat San Francisco in Las Vegas, then you can feel confident about your chances of getting into the bracket. Right now, it is absolutely hanging on by a thread for dear life. And some of you think that that thread has already been cut. Jeremy, you're I one of those people. I think it's already been yeah, cut. Yeah, it's just done. Yeah. yeah, I think it's done. See, I, I said this yesterday. I feel like when we look at The Athletic and Fox Sports and Jerry Palm of CBS Sports and Joe Lenardi of ESPN, it's pretty telling that BYU is still on the bubble, all things considered, with, with Lenardi, that they are only five out. Some people think BYU shouldn't even be that close. Well, my concern isn't how close BYU is to the line. My concern is you're you're not going to be able to go up. You're only, at this last night reinforced the idea of like, okay, BYU probably had to be like six in for us to even feel that comfortable. You know what I mean? Because Oklahoma <sighs> just leapfrogs. Well, me. what if Oklahoma Can loses we, today? They did the work. They got to win over Baylor late. Like that will push them ahead of BYU probably. Yeah. What if Oklahoma loses today, though? Like, BYU's right behind Oklahoma. To, like, an awesome team? Like, they may not be penalized. They just got a great win. BYU, when's the last great BYU win? It's been a long time. Probably San Francisco on the road? In January? Yeah. 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 There are teams who will just. But does that that matter, though? Does it matter? It clearly mattered last night to Lenardi. The committee. Well, that's Lenardi. He's not the committee. Does does the committee Lenardi, do what they say? Right, but Lenardi is the most credible. He's nailing sixty-seven or sixty-eight out of sixty-eight. Sixty-six on pretty average, consistently. You make so your money why, with the bubble. Why? Why would we? Why would we not believe in Lenardi there? Because every year there are two teams that get into the field that we're like, huh? That are like, I don't think that they belong. Like that kind of is where I feel like BYU I'm is right now. BYU is one of those like if BYU is one of those teams that people are like, whoa, 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 they should yeah. not have gotten into the field. Yeah, we're down to the last gasp, which is well, hopefully they maybe are, could be the one team. Yeah, you know, because and again, it's I said great. to Jason Shepard on the show yesterday, well, we put a lot of stock into the. Well, yeah, sixty-six of those teams right. Great. You know what? We can get you and I could get sixty-two right right now by putting our heads together. It's about what you do with if, the final six spots. Yes. If we never saw Lenardi, I'm not sure we'd get 62. Like, if we never saw anyone else, if we only did our own, it'd probably be different. They would know way more than we do. Okay, topic two. I asked Jerry Palm on Tuesday what would keep BYU out of the bracket on Sunday. Here's what he said. Pacific. No question. They're in if they beat Pacific. It's just hard to play a quad four loss off your schedule. And Pacific is ranked almost 300 in the net. So that's not just quad four. That's pretty far down the list. That's, it, it's really hard to, to play that one off the schedule. Yeah, 297. So is that it? If it Was that the loss? Like if BYU doesn't get in, it was the Pacific game? It feels that way. It, it's, it really feels that way because Santa Clara is now a quad one loss. No, no national analysts or nobody on the committee is going to look and say, ha, 
Ah, BYU, they lost to Santa Clara. That's a real, real bad look. It's not. Well, that no one's arguing that isn't a bad loss, but I would argue if you suddenly have five quad one wins, that changes the conversation a little bit. Like, Oh, one it helps work. for sure, but yes. I'm saying like Pacific's so, so, detriment is more impactful than BYU beating Santa Clara. Yes, and you could have helped offset some of that. If BYU had beaten Santa Clara, they, we don't think they're going to lose to Pacific. Which just stinks because both those games games came down to the wire, and the losers talk about margin, which is happening right now. But BYU it w- is one week away from being in the tourney, despite despite the losses early in the season to uh, Baxter and Harvard. So, yeah, it's Pacific. You can get in and have a quad four loss. That's it's not like you have a quad four loss, you're totally out. Ask like Rutgers. There, there are a couple teams in, right? But Rutgers has like six quad one wins or whatever, right? And they played eleven of those. So if BYU had beaten Santa Clara and still lost to Pacific somehow, BYU still might be in, you know? Talk to me about a team like Wake Forest. I cannot wrap my head around why Joe Lenardi likes Wake Forest. And we can attack that later. Wake Forest Sports Nation. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> one quad one win. The Demon Deacons! We like Deacons here. And quote-unquote, two bad losses. So, ACC, our question of the day, what is the biggest reason BYU will or will not get into the NCAA tournament bracket? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Zalo Gunner answers on Twitter, to me, the losses to Santa Clara and Pacific are similar to BYU football's loss to Boise State. Yeah. Kept a good year from being a great one. I would say BYU football had a very good year. I, I would argue it was better than good. Um, I would say BYU basketball is good. Um, the standard's really high for this program. Um, I wouldn't say it was bad or just okay. It's always good if you win, what, 22 games, 20 D1 games, and or, or at least on the bubble. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Obviously, you want to get to the tourney, but getting to the tourney every year is super unrealistic. There's an average of four or five teams that aren't in a power six league that get in at large. So it's really hard. Like St. Mary's is one of those check. And the ACC doth stinketh this year. So there will be perhaps like three or four more, right. than you'd normally have. So it's hard. Yeah. But yeah, ultimately you're right. Like BYU in the new year six, maybe a Boise state loss away. Right. And then this year we're going to look at that one week. So one week changed the season from, yeah, being like, very different. Yep, it's a it's a good argument. Hashtag BYUSN to join the conversation. Coming up, a top 25 preseason ranking for a specific group of BYU football players. Who is it? Plus, Blaine Fowler joins us. We're talking football and basketball. What's the latest from spring, according to that uh, elite designation? And is he on the hill with Jerry Palm? This is BYU Sports Nation. Is it Rock Canyon Hill? Which hill? I know what it's like to be overlooked to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Come on. Ah! <laughs> I'm undercover as a cat. Yeah, I'm very good at assuming other identities. <laughs> I'm in too deep. I need to catch that laser dock.
BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU men's volleyball, it's time to win! And perhaps that's tonight against Concordia Irvine, 9 Eastern on the BYU TV app and BYU TV. Let's go. We are live at Studio B on a Friday. This is how we do it. Alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. It is now time to welcome into our Friday party Uncle B, Blaine Fowler, from his very, very prestigious study. He's been reading a ton of books. I hope somewhere in there, Blaine, there is an explanation about why Jerry Palm still has BYU in his bracket. Yeah, yeah, Jerry's book is it's it's up up here, um, and I've read it. I've read I've read I've read every book in my library except for well, there's a couple right here I haven't read yet. I haven't read that shelf, but every other book I read, and I don't yeah. and I don't know what's in that jar right there. But let let it be known that I that I'm a avid reader and I've read every book in my library. Yeah, with every, those few exceptions. Yeah, no one owns a book they haven't read. <laughs> that is 100 percent. False. You buy the books <laughs> you think you want people to think you read, right? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, I like exactly. how Journal of Discourse is in there, too. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but you got to have that there, of course. And I've read that cover to cover multiple times. Just Clearly. So I know Orson Pratt, on. incredible. Yes. Yes, yes. Our well-read, all-star, <laughs> dual-thread analyst, Blaine Fowler, is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Blaine, in all seriousness, I'm looking at Jerry Palm's bracket, the CBS lead bracketologist, and he still has BYU men's basketball firmly in the field which is exciting but he's kind of on a hill of his own so why do you think if BYU does get in that they will get in what's the case for BYU still at this point well he's been consistent all year and if he kind of go back to the very beginning of the year and as the league got kind of going after the non non-conference schedule he was always saying hey I think the WCC is as strong as they've been. Uh, four team, you know, four bid league this year. Strength of their non-conference: St. Mary's, Gonzaga, San Francisco, BYU. And so he hung his hat on that early, and he's still hanging his hat on that, saying that hey, that loss to San Francisco um, wasn't as you know wasn't an awful loss. Um, and he also must be having holding out hope that the NCAA tournament committee actually does what they say they do and they value the entire season. So they go back and look at the good wins for BYU and look at the season in its entirety and maybe don't hold that horrific week um, with an up, upside down exclamation point around the Pacific loss in that terrible week of two losses, actually a terrible couple of weeks um, that, that really derailed uh, BYU season. If, if it wasn't for that, week even that one week they would be firmly in the field in everybody's bracket and we wouldn't be on a bubble watch and we wouldn't be doing any of this and so so why do i think jerry palm's doing that? i think he he took a stand early on that the whole season mattered he took a stand early on that the wcc was a strong league this year and should be rewarded for that and he and and he and he still thinks that that's a possibility um but the rest of us are on bubble watch like no other and it, and, it, and it doesn't help when oklahoma beats baylor right that an 18 and 14 team and it doesn't help when virginia tech beats notre dame and st louis wins and miami wins when they're not supposed to win like why are we even watching those things it's because we go back to that week that i'm talking about and otherwise we wouldn't even care what those teams are doing right now i'm not watching those games because i don't believe BYU is going to get in i wish they would <laughs> but i'm not i'm not watching with the same interest i would if byu had beaten san francisco right which is tough because, yes, if BYU beats Pacific, there's no quad three or four losses. And if BYU beats Santa right. Clara, that's a fifth quad one win. BYU's in. BYU's in. May have that, not even needed the quarterfinal uh, game against San Francisco. Who knows, right? Who knows? Yeah, and, and I, th I think with, with a San Francisco win, we're not bubble watching either. I think right. with a San Francisco win, we're going, they're not on the bubble. That that game was huge. And let's face it, San Francisco's good. Yep. Like, I – as we watch them you know, up close and personal in the tournament, they've got they got all of the makings of being a really, really good team. They've got size. They've got great guard play. They, they have all of that. I remember saying um, the night night before they were going to go up against Gonzaga, let's see how Shabazz does against um, the Gonzaga guard line. Yeah, he was ridiculous again. Bouye wasn't quite as good, but that's a really good team. Um, and, and they're better than BYU right now. Uh, they might not be better than BYU if BYU had – 
everybody that they had at the beginning of the season, the whole league might have been different if you keep Harward and, and Gavin Beckshire, but they don't have them. And so we are on the bubble watch. One thing I noticed in my bubble watch, though, good to be in the Big 12. You know, that's like here, here we are with Oklahoma at 18 and 14. There's 7-11 in league play. And we're talking about with that win over Baylor, there's a possibility they're in the tournament. Get a lot yeah. more leeway when you're in that kind of a league. And you think about BYU's record, you look at quad one wins, you look at all of that, and you would think, well, wait a minute, BYU's record and, and their resume should be significantly ahead of Oklahoma, but no, because Oklahoma is in the Big 12, and that's valued, and an 18 and 14 team with a 7 and 11 conference record is in consideration. So that, that's the difference. BYU has that to look forward to in a couple of years, and I think we'll find out that 18 and 14 is not that easy, and 7 and 11 in the league is not that easy in that league. Yes, and I hope uh, BYU can get seven wins in the Big 12 in 18 games. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's going to be oh, brutal. Yeah. Like, how many – who are you beating? Uh, you're hoping that UCF stinks. How many games are you playing with them? You're hoping you can – it's super tough. It's super tough. So, yeah. yes, it's going to be a learning curve. We're going to be cashing checks. We've never cashed before as, as a university. It's going to be awesome. But, yeah, if you can go 7-11, have a different, decent non-con, it's a totally different model – that Utah embraced a couple years ago and in basketball still hasn't quite figured out. But obviously in football, they go easy in the non-con most of the time and then get after it in conference yep. play. That's how you do it. And and I, and I will say that that um, basketball is a little easier. To, to be really good in basketball, with the way the transfer portal works now and big-time recruits work now, it's not like football. In football, I mean, you need 40 guys. You need 40 really good guys. You Not only do you need to be good in your – um, uh, and I'm talking on each side of the ball. Not only do your your 22 starters and specialists need to be good, you almost need to be du double at every single solitary position. In basketball, if you have three crazy talented guys and a couple of role players, you can win a lot of games. So if you if you can get those guys and something, so it's not quite as hard to turn things around. And I think BYU is going to look really different two years from now um, than they look right now they got to go out and the, and they've got to find some guys before they get in the big 12 or eight. We'll, we'll be going. We wish they were seven and 11 in the league. Blaine Fowler is on BYU sports nation. Blaine, I know you're dialed in on BYU women's basketball as well. And looking at ESPN's bracketologist, Charlie cream, he has BYU as a five seed. Why do you think BYU is a dangerous team as they approach the NCAA tournament? Because I've heard you say that about them. They're a dangerous team. Why is that? Yeah, I, I think they've been underrated all, all season long. I, I think going into the tournament, you know, they ended up with that 15 rating right there as they entered the WCC tournament. Um, and and I, there's one exception to this. They didn't do this in the game against Gonzaga, and maybe it was a little bit of pressure, and maybe it was good for them. Like, I'm not so sure that Mark Few was sad that, that Gonzaga lost to St. Mary's, um, you know, a, a week or so ago because it, was a lot, it allowed him to get their attention and to say, listen – you know, we're not without flaws. So let's, let's work on these things and shore them up before we get into the turn. I think Gonzaga in the long run on the men's side is going to be better for that loss to St. Mary's and, and has a chance to get to the final four again for BYU's women. You know, I think that they were maybe thinking, man, we're, we're unbeatable. We're flawless. We don't have a weakness. Um, but what's very apparent is their guard play has to live up to their talent level for them to be good and great guard play wins tournament games and Shaley Gonzalez and, pa and Paisley Harding and Albiero and, and Graham, who's a shooter on the outside. They, they all struggled in that championship game against Gonzaga. And maybe that's an eye opener. Now they can get to work and they can return to who they were all season long when they only lost two games, um, you know, leading up to that championship game. I think they have the guard play. I think they're physical enough and have enough size that they can make a, a big statement in this NCAA tournament. Teams with great guards win tournament games. Uh, now, let's, so let's take that Gonzaga game out of there because once in a while, everything doesn't fall for you. Um, I think these guards are going to turn around now and play with a chip on their shoulders and, and correct what they did in that, in that Zags game and that's the formula for success. Their guards are so good and so experienced, they will win games in this NCAA tournament. And I, and you know, if they're not in the Sweet 16 and possibly the Elite Eight, I'll actually be surprised. Yes, because this team went to the second round last year, lost a close game to Arizona, in a game when 
Paisley Harding had a broken hand, but played through it. Unbelievable. Right. Yes, it is Sweet 16 for this team. The expectation is to win two games. And that's even if they're a six, I think, right? If they're a five, obviously oh, yeah. you play a 12 and then you're playing a four or 13. We still expect BYU to win that. Even if BYU is a six, we expect BYU to beat a three in the second round on their home court. The expectations are high for yes. this group. Yeah, and, and like my expectation of Sweet 16 is the baseline. They just have to be who they are. They need to play relaxed. Guards need to to defend and, and shoot the ball with confidence. Um, the, I, I think Elite Eight is not out of the question for this basketball team. Sweet 16 to me is the baseline. They have the talent. They, they don't have a lot of weakness unless they shoot the ball horrifically, um, which they did in that Gonzaga. They yeah. literally, I, we're talking about Paisley at three of 15 and Shaley at seven of 18, Albiero two of six and Tegan at one of six. Yeah. I mean, the team shot 32% and 22% from the three point line. And, and, and Gonzaga is a good team defensively and, and, and at least has a game plan, knows them as well as any, and anyone 48. That's the one beauty of the tournament. Um, it's harder to win in league when you play against teams that, they know your coaching style. They know what you like to do. They, they're they're better at taking you out of the things you do best. They're most familiar with you. And really good coaches like Lisa and like Juddy, it's a great job. It's always a tough matchup in league play, especially when you're playing a team for the second or third time, right? And so in the tournament, teams are playing in for the first time. They're going to have a heck of a time trying to control that guard line for BYU. So Sweet 16 to me is the baseline for this women's team, and Elite 8 is not out of the question. I will not be surprised in any way, shape, or form if this is an Elite 8 basketball team. Blaine Fowler is on BYU Sports Nation. Let's end with spring football, Blaine. What's the latest from the Cougars? Because we've been so focused on basketball, rightly so, it's March, that now football's kind of faded to the back. They're still doing their thing in spring football. But what's the number one storyline right now happening with BYU spring football? Uh, there's a couple of things. The, the offense is really good. They look like in regular season form, not in spring form. And that's kind of always the case when you have a returning starter at quarterback. But they don't just have a returning starter um, in Jaron Hall. And by the way, watching him right now in spring ball, like watching him yesterday, compared to last spring, he, he is so much further ahead in in how quickly he's making decisions and how quickly he's getting the ball out. Throwing the ball with confidence and accuracy and velocity, he, just, he looks really good. He's And you know how we reserve the word elite for very few people on this show, That's right? That's right. <laughs> and, and we, so in spring ball, I'm gonna give him the elite tag. He looks like an elite, elite quarterback on a national level in practice and, and I've seen a number of practices already and he's the, the good news is he's surrounded with depth at every single position on the offensive side they do not have a position without talent and depth on the offense defensively is where I've been watching to see if we can shore up some things on the defensive side of the ball watching specifically the D-line and and I'm convinced now after two weeks that there's some new guys that are going to have a a big impact. Hey, Logan Fauna, we, you know, we talked about him. He looked really good yesterday in practice. And there's some youngins like, like Mitchell, but the guys that played last year's young guys, big, fast, nasty dudes right now. I'm talking like Nelson Mangelson, baddies bigger. So I, I think they're going to be really good in the D line. And, and as I watched that linebacking core was a strength to start the year. Starters were the strength and they just didn't have the depth to hold on as they had multiple injuries in that position. So now what I'm looking at is, has that depth last year that had to play, are those guys developed enough that if they have injuries, they're going to be better? I think I think they've shored that up. So defensively, I think they're going to surprise some people. Offensively, I don't know that it's a surprise. This should be a really good offensive team. I think everybody expects that. Defensively, I think they're going to be able to do a lot more things because they're deeper. I think we'll see them play more aggressively, play more man, you know, it's all based on what they see on the other side of the ball. If you're seeing a spread team, you, the way you play a spread team is to, to play more coverage and drop more people. They play fewer of those kinds of teams this year. I think they have the personnel to man up and get after a little bit more. So I think defense will be a pleasant surprise. Offense will live up to expectations. Everybody expects them to be good. Defense will be better than people think. Next year's the year I've been looking forward to. Last year, I thought they'd win eight games. So I think they overachieved, even with all the injuries. This year, I thought they'd win 10 games, and, I, and I'm sticking with that after two weeks of spring ball. I think this is a 10-win talent type of team. 
Let's go. All right, Blaine, uh, you've covered everything, and now you need to get back to reading behind you. So we're going to let you go yeah, back to I, your study and figure some things sports, out. For... <laughs> sports is all good, but once in a while, I mean, this whole shelf right here, that right there, that's all philosophy, and I need to get back into philosophy. <laughs> I failed a philosophy class at BYU, fun fact. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Socrates, yeah. Plato, you know, those guys. Morons. Oh, I love Plato. <laughs> so. Oh, that's like... wait. That's a that's a, that's a that's a very obscure reference to a movie, and I gotta see if you guys know. Hi. That's that's the great that's the great Vicini from the Princess Bride. Oh yes, that's goes, right. You've heard of you've heard of Socrates, Plato, and he goes morons. Mor- <laughs> so. Inconceivable. Yeah, I don't think he knows what that means. Yeah. Morons. Yeah. Blaine, good to talk to yeah. you, man. Never start a land war in sometime. Russia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> never start a land war in Russia. And never, uh, what do you say? Never start a land war in Russia and never um, uh, challenge deal a, with a, a, a Sicilian. Yeah, never a challenge Sicilian when death is when <laughs> death is on the line. A Sicilian. <laughs> never challenge a Sicilian when death is on the line. When death is on the line, then he goes ha ha ha. It falls over. So, oh, it's just pride. I love it. Great stuff. Blaine, thanks for letting us uh, celebrate Friday the right way. See you guys. <laughs> this audience knows that movie. Like, I don't know what it, BYU, members of the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day. we love that movie. It's on BYU TV sometimes. It's the other day we had Hoosiers an on, the way, before the another, West Coast. Another all-timer. Oh, man, we have some good movies yep. on this channel. Good programming. How about that? That's great. Coming up. One of the best gymnasts in the nation, Sadie Minor Van Tassel, joins the program. And are you Team Max Hall or Team Kevin Federer? Oh, shoot. Why are we asking you about this? This is BYU Sports Nation. I have a jersey of one of those jerseys. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. (laughs) With the free BYU TV app. I like it. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. BYU Gymnastics has been ranked like all year. They are fantastic. They host Arizona Saturday. That's tomorrow. Watch it at 2 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. It's going to be another fun meet. He is Jeremiah Spencer. This is a Friday edition of BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get content throughout the day, follow us on all of the major social media platforms. You know where they are. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Jeremy, before we go to the always exciting Cougar Whip Around, I do have a new gift that we received from one of our elite BYU Sports Nation fans. Nelvin Wilson found me in Las Vegas. 
And I had seen this on yeah. social media when he posted. He said, "This is the Spencer." Linton I got the rookie card, card yeah. of Zach Wilson with you in the background. No, and other way, Spencer Linton rookie card featuring Zach. Wilson. <laughs> That's what I think. He wanted to donate it yeah. to Studio B in the set, and so we're going to now yeah. replace the Zach Wilson card that I have in front of the football with this one from Nelvin Wilson. Do we like play music and like? I don't know. Do, is there like a formal procession? Do we? Have, we'll put it up there. In Whatever. Yeah, we'll throw Fantastic. it up there in just a minute. Yeah. So thank you, Nelvin. I, I told him, I'm like, oh, that absolutely is going to make its way to Studio B. Here's the formal music in a world of cards. <laughs> no, that's the movie trailer. Get it out of here. <laughs> All right. Let's whip it. Cooker Whip Round presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. Integrate this. ESPN put BYU quarterbacks as number 25 on its top 25 quarterback power ranking. On a scale of 1 to 10, how confident are you in the future of the Cougar quarterback? I'm very confident as long as Aaron Roderick is the offensive coordinator. Yeah. And as long as he has the resume of coaching up Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall, who is going to be an NFL quarterback as well. Yes, I'm very confident. Uh, it, who's the next guy after Jaron? It's going to be a fun conversation. We'll see who shows up in the mix and who becomes that guy. Is it Conover? Is it Cade Finnegan? Is it Soljay Mayanova? Come play quarterback at BYU. Go to the NFL. That rhetoric is now developing again. Yep. Yeah, let's go. Jaron, we talked about BYU baseball's big win over Oklahoma State in Arlington, Texas. They're ranked, Oklahoma State. Will BYU be ranked at some point this season? They already were in one poll. I think they'll jump back in next week. Um, probably even with one win in this series. If they win the series, yeah, let's when, go. When you sweep Arizona State on the road, and now you're beating Oklahoma State, and you're 5-0 and against Power 5 baseball teams, yeah, you you're going you're gonna to be ranked. Yes, they'll be ranked at some point this season. Yes. BYU announced an alumni game for March 31st. The two teams... We were not invited. <laughs> we're not alumni. <laughs> will be led by former BYU quarterbacks Max Hall and, as a throwback, Kevin Federick. Are you Team Hall or Team Federick in this I, alumni game? I do love Max. Got to know Max. We were in school with Max. And uh, he hates Utah like I hate Utah. But I only own one of these two guys' jerseys. Jerem has a Kevin I have Federick a Kevin Fe from game, the Motors wa game worn jersey. Autographed. Motor City Bowl. Like, no one had, this must have been his backup one because he got sacked a lot. It would have had turf burns. Okay. Mm. So this is clearly the backup jersey. But Federick, so dreamy, dude. I love Kevin Federick. <laughs> I met him for the first time on a golf course in La Quinta, California with his dad. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was so I'm, random. I'm, I'm happy that Kevin Federick's going to be slinging it left handed around, uh, you know, Lavelle Edwards Stadium one last time. He's got 500 yards against Washington. Margin Hooks coming back to catch his passes? Seriously, let's go. 80-yarder <laughs> against Utah. Let's go. Okay, coming up, rise and shout out to Running for a Cure. And one of the best gymnasts in the nation joins us next, Sadie Miner Van Tassel. This is BYU Sports Nation. Oh, she's one of the best on campus. Let's go. The heat. Getting set for success. Demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. What's the deal with your dog? Scout, it's a sad story. I love sad stories. Moose and I are going to win the Youth Trainer Challenge this year. 
This is my last summer to win it. I'm about to lose the ranch. If you could get Scout back to being the cattle dog she once was, that'd be something. She sees something in you. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Big 12, we coming for you. BYU Baseball, game two against Oklahoma State, who's number six in the country. Listen to it on BYU Radio, 7.30 Eastern tonight. Just a, just a taste It's going to happen in the future, man. Let's go. Win tonight, take the series. Go. Make it happen. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live on a Friday in Studio B, as promised. One of the most elite athletes on campus right now. Her name is Sadie Minor Van Tassel of 19th ranked BYU Gymnastics. The February Athlete of the Month from BYUSN. There you go. Female Athlete of the Month. Right the here. very first female Athlete of yeah. the Month. We will continue to do this. Congratulations, first and foremost, Thank on that award, you. Sadie. Thank you. <laughs> That is clearly the best honor you've ever received. <laughs> obviously, obviously. I mean. Yes, we will print with 90s perforated uh, edges, you know, a certificate. I'll hang it up in my room. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it can go with those eight consecutive Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference Gymnast of the Week honors. Yes. By the way, right do, you, do you get anything for those? No. Just, just, it's just an honor. Just an Instagram just post. Cred. Yeah. Just street yeah. cred. Yeah. Street cred. Yeah. Okay, eight straight. Yeah. Uh, my money is on you, not that I am condoning betting, <laughs> to win the Gymnast of the Year in the conference because of what you've done week to week. Uh, how have you been able to maintain this excellent standard level? I mean, it's just wild. Yeah, sometimes I feel like it's a lot of pressure, but honestly, I just take it day by day. I can't, I can't think too much in the future or I start to feel the pressure, so I just take it day by day, honestly. Let's go back to the beginning of the season. What were your expectations for yourself? And how gratifying has it been to sort of uh, perform at a, a really high level this year? It's been awesome. Yeah. I had a lot of expectations for myself because, honestly, I didn't know if I was coming back for this year. I mm. mean, it was <laughs> it was really up in the clouds if I was going to come back. And so I had a lot of goals. I wanted to compete all around, which has been my goal since I came in as a freshman. And I wanted to – I didn't even have goals to, like, be the gymnast of the week any like any time. But since I got it, it just it feels so much more – um, like I've accomplished something that I knew I could. It was just a matter of when I could do it, you know. That's Let, awesome. Yeah, let's discuss some more about why you were waffling, if you will, or, or hesitating <laughs> yeah. to come back. I've heard guard's side of this, but now I want to <laughs> hear. I want to hear your side of this. Yes. Um, yeah. So my husband lives in Nebraska, and we dated for a year. He got back from his mission May of 2020, and we dated for almost a year. We got married in May of 2021. Um, we kind of were deciding, like, we did all long-distance dating last year, and we kind of decided, like, kind of what are our options? Like, I could be done, you could be done, I could transfer, you could transfer. Um, but it was, like, I just never really felt at peace with any of those decisions. And I was kind of just, like, a mess all of last year trying to make this decision. And I, I went to one of my coaches. I went to Brogan, and she was extremely helpful. She, like, saw right through me. She's like, you don't want to transfer like, and you don't want to stop doing gym and because she had done a long distance relationship so mm. she knew what it was like and and she was just like I just what if you got married and you did a long distance marriage you spend the summer together you can work with guard you know you can go out every other weekend maybe during preseason we can figure out something and that was like immediately just like that's what I want to do mm. you know I I don't want to give up gym I know there's so much more in me left to do but I don't want to be away from the person that makes me the happiest and so it was kind of like we had to find this balance and it was like no matter what we cho chose like it was going to be hard and we just yes. kind of had to choose our hard and that's kind of the decision that we came up with and it's it's definitely been hard but it's it's been the right decision for us really it's, it's the person you love that makes you the happiest and the <laughs> thing that perhaps yeah, makes you the happiest that's why i was so torn and you can have both in this yeah. scenario which is interesting but um it, so more on your husband he's a wrestler yes at nebraska yes he's not just like a student chilling in yeah. lincoln right <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He competes at a high level. Big Ten wrestling is mm -hmm. a big deal. It is. Right? Very big deal. Yeah. Yes. It's huge. Yes. If BYU only had wrestling. <laughs> I know. To, Come on! I know. A lot of, lot of controversy. Oh, I'm going to get some text on that one. <laughs> um, yeah. And what's it been like for you to kind of be one of the leaders of this team, too, that last year there was this sort of 
uh, power uh, you know, gap where it's like, all right, who's going to step in? Mm -hmm. You were one of them. What's yeah. it been like with this group to figure that out? And you guys, again, have become this awesome top 15, top 20 team. Yeah, it's it's been great, honestly. This team has been very different from any other team that I've been here at BYU. And I think that's been one of the biggest blessings, that it's been so different. Like, um, you know, my sister was on the team last year. I was really close with all of the seniors last year. One of my best friends was my year and decided not to come back. And so I was like, I felt like I was the only one left in kind of that friend group. But it kind of forced me to, like, look outside of that friend group. And it's been the best. Like, it's been the biggest blessing. I've, I've just learned so much about the other girls, and they've been – like such a big support to me. Like I can feel their support and their love, and it's it's been one of the best years for me. She's a top ten gymnast nationally in the all around. She's won eight straight gymnasts of the week in the Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference. Sadie Minor Van Tassel is on BYU Sports Nation. I just put out your numbers individually. You're on the 19th ranked team. What are your postseason aspirations, both individually and as a team? Yeah, we would definitely like to win conference again. It would be three years running. Um, and then our, our team goal is to make it to day two of regionals, so the top 16, sweet 16. Um, and then for myself, um, I would just like to make it to nationals, <laughs> whether it's as an all-arounder or on an individual event. Like, I think it would be great. What does it take to get to nationals as an individual all-arounder? Yeah, so if the team doesn't advance to nationals, then they do individual for each event. There's one for each event and then one all-arounder. And you have to be the highest score in your regional site besides the teams that advance. So You can do it. <laughs> the way you've been performing, you yes. can absolutely do it, uh, <laughs> yeah. which is awesome. Also, shout out to Mapleton. That's yes. where you're from. That's yes, where absolutely. I moved to six months ago. It's a wonderful place. Let's go. Did you go to Maple Mountain? I did. Well, adding to the amazing <laughs> Maple Mountains, it's getting better and better. Eagles, is it? Is yep. that what it is? Eagles, Eagles. yeah. By, by the way, do you, Eagles, do you have a favorite event? Um, I used to not like bars at all because I, I've had two shoulder surgeries, so it just hurt me a lot. Oh, jeez. But That's I, the other thing. Gyms just get so <laughs> wrecked. You, yeah. you wreck your bodies. Pound for pound. Absolutely. It's amazing. You the strongest. Yeah. You put yes. up with the most. It's insane. Yes. But, but continue. But bars. Yes, but bars. But I... I really loved bars this year, honestly. And I i don't think I have a least favorite event or a favorite. I just like them all. <laughs> well, when you're good at them all, you should like them all. <laughs> yes, That's I guess 100%. that. Yes. Okay, so if you're local, show up tomorrow at noon. Smithfield House. <laughs> Last home meet. Yep. Or watch on BYU TV in the end. Let's go. Yep. Let's go. Arizona. Hey, do you mind signing our flag? Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, watch your step. Yeah. <laughs> As Sadie signs Female the flag. Player of the month. She'll get her Let's BYU go. Sports Nation karma. It's going to be an amazing meet tomorrow. I bet she's going to win the all around. I bet she will. Not a shocker. Coming up, <laughs> your responses as to why BYU will or won't get in the NCAA tournament on the men's side. And a rise and shout out to a fantastic cause. Don't go anywhere. We're coming back to close out a Friday show. I watch uh, BYU TV because it has good programming uh, for all family members, aligns to my values. BYU TV really does help me with my parenting. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. No matter what you watch or listen, you always live uh, feeling better. All of us together. Andy is new this season. Yeah, she's awesome. 
very capable and very big hearted. It's so amazing to be a part of this I and mean, to travel around the world and learn so much from others while we can participate in their goals in meaningful ways. Yeah, we like to tease her. You know, it's natural, though, being the new girl and all. Yeah, she hit the ground running. Yeah, she did. I hope the show can inspire others to get involved and open their eyes to the people around them. Yeah, she looks small, but she's super tough. Doesn't like snakes, though. Yeah, nah, that's for sure. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Station always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Don't forget to download the podcast, Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, subscribe, rate, and review the show. Our question of the day, what's the biggest reason BYU men's basketball will or will not get into the NCAA tournament bracket. Come on, guys. Come on. Yeah. Uh, our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at Roberts underscore MN on Twitter. Three words. Losing, period, two, period, Pacific. What if BYU gets in? I'm telling you, every year there's one or two teams that everyone's like, what in the world? Would BYU be that team? Like, what in the world BYU got in? I feel like those teams, Spence, have something where it was like, oh, well, now that I look at it, it makes a little sense. Like, BYU's resume is definitely in the conversation. I just I just don't think there's that one thing where it's like, oh, yeah, the Wouldn't net it, is 32 or okay. whatever. Wouldn't it make you know sense, I mean? though, if someone said, well, they've got four quad one wins compared to these other three teams that only had one or two. Oh, okay. Well, the one or the in, non-conference strength of schedules in the three hundreds for these other teams and BYU's ninety-nine. Okay, it pops, but it doesn't pop at the degree I mm. am like thinking right okay. there. Right, like if BYU had six quad one wins or something, you know what I mean, and was out right now, it'd be like, and they got in, it'd be like, oh, because of six quad one wins. Like, what are we going to point at right now that we were ninety-nine in net non-conference strength of schedule? That's not like amazing. Sure. Yes, it's better than some of the others. The the idea that see here's what I can't get by. Like, oh, they don't deserve to play. There are going to be some teams that get into the NCAA tournament that, quote well, unquote, don't deserve. They're just the bubble's weak. So, yes. like, there are going to be some eh, teams that get in regardless. But don't use the Kruger board takes as the basis of the. They of, don't deserve the, it. Like, what? It's what? Like the committee will judge that. That's not up for you to <laughs> judge. You can judge. Do, keep doing your judging thing on Kruger board. That's fine. All right. <laughs> By the way, our Zach Wilson card, the new and improved. It's up. Is up and we had like a ceremony and everything. It was great. <laughs> Thus it is in the year of our Lord, 2022, March 11th, that the Spencer Linton rookie card is hereby sitting upon the ramming of BYU Sports yes. Nation featuring Zach Wilson. It is official. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh. That's the music we found. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Cougs versus Cancer. The run is tomorrow. We'll We're emceeing it. We'll be there. You can register. Cougs versus Cancer. BYU.edu. Do it. Run on a cold Saturday morning and or feel better about your donate. life. Yeah. Oh, thanks to today's guest, Blaine Fowler and Sadie Minor Van Tassel. Sorry to Dennis. For Jeremy I'm Spencer. Shout out to Brogan Evanson. We'll see you on Monday. Get in that bracket. Let's get go in, Cougs. Man. Let's go. Let's get in. Come on.